Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to this meeting of the Board of NHS England here in London. I'd like to welcome those members of the public who have joined us in the room this morning and also those who are watching uh, on the live stream. Uh, simply to remind everybody, it's a meeting in public rather than a public meeting, it, but it's a meeting at which the Board will be transacting substantive business. So. Um, in declaring the meeting open, let me first of all record apologies from Michelle Mitchell, who's on annual leave, and to issue a welcome to Matthew Swindells, for whom this is the first uh, meeting of the board. Matthew, good morning and, and, and welcome to the board. Uh, declarations of interest. Our current practice is that we table a list of the declarations of interest, but I invite uh, all members of the board to declare any further interest which may involve business currently before the board. Okay, and we have a paper coming on, on learning disability. Thank you very much. Any other declaration of interest? No, thank you. Uh, to record that there is no uh, fire alarm scheduled for the period of the meeting this morning so that if the alarm does go off, our staff will guide everybody uh, off the premises. Uh, let me take the minutes of the last meeting. Uh, people are happy that they are an accurate record and that I should sign them on your behalf. Thank you. I have no notice of any matters arising. Any matters arising? No, thank you very much. Um, for the agenda, would I please be able to have the board's um, approval to reversing the order of items five, that's around the MCP emerging care model, and item six around general practice services uh, to get a, what I feel is a more logical flow. Are we happy to do that? Thank you very much. So um, let me then turn to the uh, Chairman's report. Just two or three things that I think I need to mention. The first is that the, uh, this meeting takes place as part of a series of meetings over the last two days. Uh, we had yesterday the commissioning committee meeting. Uh, we had a development session which looked at um, the STP process, the outcomes and the next steps uh, at dementia uh, and at healthy new towns. And also this morning we will be having a private meeting which will take business which um, is not by virtue of confidentiality appropriate to be uh, considered in public. And then this afternoon we have a, strategic, a meeting of the Strategic HR and Remuneration Committee. I wanted to mention specifically something that we did yesterday, uh, which was a, a, a ceremony of awards uh, for members of our staff who had gone the extra mile. They were uh, nominated by their peers and we were happy to confer certificates of award on Ang Angela Med, Paul Jackson, Siobhan Clibbins, Vicky McAvoy, Susan Carhill, Becky Byrne, Siobhan Cambridge, and Anita Kramer. I would just invite the board formally today to record our thanks to those who work for us and uh, upon whom we have conferred that special recognition. Uh, secondly, to record also um, uh, certain changes in the ministerial ranks since we last met. Uh, the team with whom we have worked in the past uh, include the following, Alistair Burt, who uh, announced his standing down from office before the um, change of government, change of prime minister. Uh, ben Gama, formerly our parliamentary undersecretary for quality, who's now minister for the cabinet office and paymaster general. Uh, Jane Ellison, who was our former parliamentary undersecretary for public health, is now financial secretary to the treasury and George Freeman, former Life Sciences Minister, who's now based in the Cabinet Office and becomes Chair of the Prime Minister's Policy Board and Co-Chair of the Policy Unit at Number 10. Um, I think I would bracket, uh, alongside those ministerial changes, Nick Seddon, who was the uh, Special Advisor on Health to the Prime <coughs> Minister. And I know the Board would join me in um, thanking them for uh, their cooperation with the Board in the past and our best wishes for the next stages of their careers. Uh, as everybody is aware, the Health Secretary post remains unchanged, but I should just note uh, the new ministerial lineup. Uh, Philip Dunn uh, is the Minister for Health. Uh, he will in his brief includes overseeing all aspects of hospital care, NHS performance and operations, uh, and other uh, areas of activity. And he was previously Minister of State at Defence, probably a good starting point for uh, joining the Department of Health. Um, uh, Nicola Blackwood uh, is the Parliamentary Undersecretary for Public Health and Innovation. Uh, David Mowat joins us as the Parliamentary Undersecretary of State for Community Health and Care. 
and Lord Pryor remains in the Department as the Parliamentary Under Secretary of State for Health, covering all aspects in the House of Lords, uh, and his brief also includes other matters relating directly to our activities. Um, although there's been a change in the Prime Minister and the line-up of the uh, front benches, uh, we should also, I think, note that the commitment in the Conservative Party manifesto uh, to implementation of the five-year forward view remains intact uh, and continues to be the basis upon uh, we will uh, base our discussions with the, uh, with the new government team. Item three, uh, just simply to record uh, formally that our annual report and accounts were tabled last Thursday together with those of the Department of Health. That's an item that is substantively on our agenda today, but I wanted to raise it at this stage merely to invite the board uh, to record our grateful thanks to all of those who um, made this possible. It's an extraordinary uh, complex event to uh, prepare the consolidated accounts uh, for NHS England and a detailed annual report, which I believe to be a fair and accurate account um, of our uh, proceedings and transactions, successes and failures over the past year. Fourthly, uh, the Secretary of State um, tabled on the 21st of July his assessment of NHS England's performance against the mandate. Uh, the overall assessment was a positive one. Uh, it observes that in increasingly challenging times, NHS England continued to deliver the majority of our objectives in line with the government's mandate and our business plan, and that we have put key foundations in place to deliver the five-year forward view. Uh, the request is for the next year for greater progress on integration on the NHS constitution standards and on efficiencies, and um, a number of those issues are actually substantively on our agenda this morning. Uh, fifthly, to report that we had a formal accountability meeting of Tuesday this week with the Secretary of State. Uh, we dealt with matters including strategic finance update, uh, particularly the landing of the year end for 2015-16, uh, but looking also on to 16-17 and beyond, and uh, to look at the review also of the STP package. Finally, um, uh, 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 two or three personal um, issues. One, to uh, congratulate uh, Victor Adabawali on the conferment of an honorary degree uh, from the University of York. Uh, secondly, to note the uh, presence of David Roberts on the um, Financial Services EU Task Force, which the Financial Times reports as an elite crew <laughs> to steer the city through Brexit's choppy waters. So to have David helping to share us through the our own choppy waters um, is, is an added advantage. But then, sadly, to record uh, the, the death of the president of the Association of Directors of Adult Social Services, Harold Bodmer, uh, who, who sadly died of a heart attack whilst engaged in, in work with us on the STT process. I know the board would wish to record our, our deep regrets for somebody who was a, a loyal friend and a, a very impressive individual.